Dear viewers, welcome to our TV show, Leadership and Innovation, a joint venture between the Academy of Leadership Science in Switzerland and Radio Television Alpse in Sweden. My name is Blair Taberisha, I'm a doctoral candidate. This show has an educational, motivating and innovative character. We aim to contribute to the all human being to grow. That's why we will work hard to book inspiring guests in this show who has achieved a lot of science in practice. Today, our guest is Tony J. Stellini, an international award-winning self-strategic and business coach specializing in human behavior, leadership development, and maximizing business and human potential. He has been on an equal, heartbreaking, and incredible, inspiring, transformative journey, born in the Republic of North Macedonia, like a panics rising from the ashes. Tony went from being critically ill-abled, striving in a civil war, and living homeless on the streets of London to turning his life around and graduating from one of the top engineering universities in the UK. Climbing the corporate ladder and becoming an international recognized TEDx speaker, 12 times Amazon best-selling and multi-award winning author of several books, filmmaker and one of the world's leading authorities on a human behavior. The psychologist of health leadership, excellence, empowered, and purposeful living, leading, and loving. Tony is the founder of the TGA's Conviction, LTD, a coaching, mentoring, speaking, consulting, and education, and services institution dedicated to exploring, expanding the frontiers of human awareness and potential. He travels the world, assigned people from all professionals and businesses from all market sectors, engaged in a highly stressed performance, productivity, and proposed missions. Tony co created the Living My Illusion, the Truth Hurst multi awarded winning life coaching documentary, created the Into Your Divinity documentary, serious and pioneer several trademaker mythologists in human development. He is a silver winner of Literary Book Award in 2021 and a winner of the Minecraft Media Book Award 2021 for A Path to Wisdom, Loneliness, and the Unfocable Code. Tony is a winner as well of the London SME Most Visionary Entrepreneur 2020 Award and received the Business Coach of the Year on 2021 Award. He has been featured on BBC, SKI, ABC, NBC, CBS, and as Fox as well, reaching over 100 million people. Dear Tony, it's my joy and pleasure to welcome you to our TV show, Leadership and Innovation. Thank you so much, Bleta, for this introduction. It's great to have you here. And the time I was reading all of your journey was very inspiring and as well touched my heart, but I'm very proud of you that you reach all of those and you become as a sunshine for us to bring us motivation and full joy in life. Thank you. You are welcome. And thank you to you, to Fadil, to Arnas, who are called to actually grow and also equal be sunshine for others to feel warm and connected and be all they can be. So you know that our show has been named Leadership and Innovation. So in your opinion, how can competent leadership foster innovation in organization? One of the major skills and traits of competent leaders is to be bold thinkers. And they actually play a primary role in fostering in uh, innovation in their businesses, in their culture, across employees, across their leaders. And we all have seen the religious enthusiasm uh, around in a way, innovation. Why? Because, for instance, we all want to wait for the next phone. You know, for instance, you know, globally, telecoms companies uh, use innovation to be able to keep us hooked on the next product. But it's just not a product. It actually serves an incredible function. For instance, the technologies we use right now to be able to communicate, conduct this interview, somebody had to innovate. So uh, really the uh, in the organizations and the businesses uh, and the business owners that I coach and advise globally, uh, several char characteristics continually um, emerge as key to fostering innovation in organizations. Number one is to never assume, but always to ask questions and learn to listen deeply. This way you can actually connect to every idea in the organizations and sometimes from the unexpected source an idea is born that your gut feeling tells you this is going to be the next product no matter what the industry you are and the other part uh, which is extremely important for innovation is actually to have a very clear purpose and to remain on purpose 
for instance, if your product or service is to be number one in the world, let's say in leadership, then you know how do you keep up with that innovation every single year? What is it that you can contribute and innovate for you to be the thought leader in leadership? And the other part is uh, number three, it's um, uh, most uh, leaders that I work with, we experiment with risk. We put all the ideas out there and sometimes you have to take a risk to actually create something which becomes a legacy, which becomes something that defines you as an innovator in the world. For instance, you know, if you look at uh, Jeff Bezos, what he has done with Amazon, you know, it has become one of the biggest growing companies in the world. Now, we, we can apply innovation in fashion, we can uh, apply innovation in building industry, we can uh, apply innovation in education. In every area of our life, innovation is important. And the other skill that leaders must, uh, I would say, adopt, it's um, being able to have this ability to reflect and synthesize all the information. Now, here in this training group, a lot of happens. And, you know, uh, while we spend eight to 10 hours daily addressing everything that's going on in my, in my clients' minds, uh, the important part is at the end of the day, and the next day to be able to integrate and synthesize that information. And lastly, I would say one of the things that I love about my clients globally, uh, it's awakening the creativity in their head. Now, the more you start to become clear in your mind, the more that Im innovation becomes uh, very clear. What is it that you want to do? What is it that your authentic self is calling you to do for the business or the product or the service you want to bring in the world? So all of those points that you mentioned, it's very well answered from your side, but that's actually what brought my mind here was the part of the risk that you just mentioned right now. So of course, I think that considering risk, of course we have plus and cons, but when it comes to like, for instance, when you consult with many executives, like entrepreneurs, business owners, some famous clients as well, is there a common challenge may facts on them? So, or better, maybe they can have, for instance, are not very strength on risking, for instance. So how are you helping them to meet this challenge? Well, uh, there are many questions you just asked me, Vlad, and they're all beautiful questions. I love, uh, I do what I do because I love answering questions for people. So firstly, one of the common challenge for every client I've ever worked, that includes also myself because I've been doing a lot of self-development work on myself, it's having head full of noise. And the reason the head is full of noise and a very stressed body, because nowadays we are bombarded with information that goes beyond to what our parents and previous generations have had, especially when it comes to information that comes through technology. And our body has limited capacity to be able to filter that information and create a clear understanding what that information is for us. So therefore, you know, uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, we end up being extremely stressful. We end up being having less confidence, having a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, and we tend to um, um, continue to build work unnecessary work pressures, which then impact our family life, our health, uh, our physical body, and not being able to control the emotional responses we have to those stimuli that comes from external information. So this is one of the key things that it's common across all of my clients. And how I do that, um, uh, I understand that when clients start working me, with me, there's this uh, common also misconception that successful people have it easy, that successful people are lucky, that successful people have somebody else who help them become successful, that they have it all, frankly. But the reality is for, uh, as I take them through the process, uh, they have to, you know, sometimes they feel like they have to choose between being successful at work, being successful in their career, being successful in building wealth over having a family, having a great health, having a great physical body, having the holidays and having other things. So a lot of people think that they have to give up something to be able to empower those critical areas of life. So this is common for most people out there where deep down they feel they have to sacrifice something in order to have something else. But there's always a better psychology, a better mindset, a better planning in order for you to achieve exactly what you want from life. For providing us such a great answer uh, on the second question that was provided from my side. But um, you say that it's very interesting, something grabbed my attention there where you say that it's very important to keep the head with noise. So why you suggest this? Full of noise. You can't really think strategically. You can't think clearly and you can't make decisions 
uh, choices which are in alignment with the outcome that you want to create in your life. So, you know, it's like, I want you to imagine you being in a nightclub, you know, where you have not only one speaker, one music, but you have two, 200 different musics playing. And most likely you will hate it being in that space. Similarly, your body, everything about you, inside of you, uh, contradicts to that noise. And it, it's seeking inside out to find a solution how to calm the mind. Because when the mind is calm, this is where true intuition can actually surface and you can be a great leader, great innovator and great change maker. Wow, that's very, thank you. So what does it take for someone to be successful in life and business? I think this is a common question that probably you may get from too many clients, not only from me. Sure, I get that question in every TV, radio, podcast show I've been around the world. And I've been almost like 800 uh, stations like that that have been asked this uh, specific question. Sometimes people believe that, you know, just God made me extremely lucky. And uh, But my answer to that is that I, I believe with all of my heart that creating your most successful life and business is about saying yes to opportunities which other people are unwilling to say yes uh, in, uh, when the opportunity is presented to them. They tend to come up with all, every single excuse to say no but they actually they don't have the clarity of thought for them to say yes to when the opportunity is presented. You know, me traveling the world and running this amazing retreat for leaders, for executives, or for uh, celebrities, for all different clients from all different professions did not happen by chance. You know, it happened by uh, 30 years of investing in my personal development, career development, professional development, business, and acquiring so many different skills and investing in so many coaches and mentors that now with a clear mind, I can organize and create anything I want that serves many more people. And uh, the second part about creating a successful life is uh, uh, to actually do a lot of deep inner work. And uh, uh, that really transforms you as a human being. Because when you can see love in every human being that you come across, even those who actually try to squash you damage you, uh, doubt you, um, I would say uh, badmouth you and expect you to live according to their beliefs and their value systems, uh, it really you uh, transform inside out. And uh, when a challenge comes like that, you need to step in back into your true authentic self, which actually deep down knows uh, what are you here to do. And the other part of creating um, most successful life is having this clear direction, clear mind, uh, clear, um, I'd say, focus, clear intent of what is it that you can do for humanity. Because if you want to really be extremely successful, you have to have a vision, mission, and purpose in life, which is much bigger than yourself, much bigger than your family, than your children, and everything you care about. It has to be something that you care for billions of people. You're right. That's that's very um, very great summarized from your side. That we have to do something great, and yeah, we have to do as well. So, thank you for that. Um, I'm a bit shocked. You're right, I'm a bit shocked the way that you're saying the things because you're touching me and you're like inspiring me so much. Okay. So let's go for the other question here. Is saying that bring in mind that you have started your life in London. And um, mentioned before when I was doing your introduction for you that you've been homeless, broke, and in the meanwhile, you're now a successful global known entrepreneur, educator, best-selling author, award-winning coach, and a speaker as well. How did you get the motivation to overcome all of those challenges and achieve so much in your life? I think um, um, overcoming challenges and being able to face pain and anything that pains you, uh, it's a part of the journey. But I actually saw that in my parents when I was uh, growing up in Macedonia, uh, where they worked extremely hard despite all of the challenges we had back then, especially being of an Albanian origin where the opportunities weren't there for children like myself. But our parents worked very hard for one number one reason, which is to actually help us uh, to educate ourselves and provide us with a different future. Now, when you grow in a family, when you see so many different challenges, and we all know as an Albanian nation, the kind of challenges we experience, but on top of that, being in, in a country where basically you are being told you are a minority, you are not enough, 
uh, my entire being was rejecting this notion that we are not equal, that equality has to do something to do with your gender, with your background, with your ethnic uh, stuff, with your education, with kind of parenting, who do you know, how much money you have, and, uh, you, you know, whether you're an Albanian or not, you know, and also whether uh, who you sleep with, which is not, nobody business, frankly, it's your body, it's you do what you do with that. And really, every time I had to overcome a big challenge, I used to step back and saying, why do I do what I do? And this why has been consistently growing since I was a child. When I was a child, I really wanted to bring equality, to stop violence in, in the family, especially in the Albanian families, and to bring love, to be to bring healing, to bring sort of transformation so people can actually pursue their dreams. Now, I also was wondering about life, life sciences, maths, engineering, and I wanted to be the best I can be. And it was in a way an escape from the pain that I saw in my culture, in myself, in my family members and everybody around me. So all of this to actually provide solutions for betterment of our life and humanity is something that consistently has driven me. And as I created this incredible uh, work that I do now globally, my books, methodologies and stuff like that, I am uh, consistently inspired to bring this to touch the lives of one billion people so they too can actually awaken that divinity within them themselves, being able to transform their mind, grow their mind, leaders to grow themselves, to be able to inspire people in the organizations, educational systems to be changed, government to be changed, new policies to be implemented, our healthcare to improve, and us as human beings to show up and be better human beings every day when we wake up. I'm sure that all of the those who are watching us right now, they are get motivated as I am motivated for those speaking, for those those ons for that you're sharing with us. It's very inspiring for me. It's like um I feel you somehow because each of us has challenging to become and to be where we are today and who we are right now. But yours is just like you're really as a shining star. All of those that you mentioned right now, of course, there has been a driving force for you. But what is actually your driving force for all of the fantastic work that you did in this world? I think one of the key driving force is uh, this desire to improve other people's lives. You know, because I, I was too little to be able to do a big impact uh, in, in, in my parents' lives and in our nation's lives and in our people's life. And we all know the kind of wars and things that we have to fight to simply have personal liberties, to be able to educate and have equal uh, career opportunities, equal opportunities to be prominent in the government, for instance, and have all those positions that you told all your life you can't have because you have an Albanian origin. And, you know, for me, uh, the idea that uh, uh, people in general uh, are separated, it's, it's a fallacy that many people have promoted that as a notion, as a philosophy. You know, on one hand, no matter what religion, because I've studied comparative religious, religious and no matter what religion you study, they all uh, uh, promote the idea that God created everything. But then when you filter that down, uh, you know, it's uh, every religion, every individual belonging in that uh, 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 religion, they start to separate that which we cannot separate. You know, so if you look at life, if you look my background in here, here in Mexico, in Cancun, if you truly believe in, in a higher power, in God, in universe, in whatever you may believe, and you believe that there's a higher intelligence behind all of that, a true believer honors that intelligence, honors that creations, regardless of what your personal beliefs or values may be. So this is where I believe that uh, to be able to be a true believer, to be able to follow whatever religion you're following, First and foremost, it's an inner work of you awakening that creation within you so that you can go out there and make a difference in the world. Definitely. I, I mean, I agree with all the words that you say, but um, I think the change starts from yourself. When you change yourself, you will change the world. So this is what you did. You start changing yourself, going out of your comfort zone, facing all of those challenges, and now you're just changing the world all around you. Where are you going? So in your professional career and building a global business, you have experience up and downs and um, all of those that we just mentioned right now. How did you manage to overcome barriers towards your way to successes? Uh, there are three inner states that we all have in our lives. One is our inner child, one is the adult in us, and one is the parent in us. And when those three inner states are listened to what the voice of those three inner states are and coming together, you truly tap into something that is very beautiful. 
And every time you overcome a challenge, every time you learn something, every time you, uh, you find a better way, so you re-engineer something and you know it can make a, a big difference, you actually awaken that inner parent, inner teacher inside of you and you want to teach it to other people. So everything that I've learned throughout my life, whether being in the corporate world, whether being critically ill as a child, whether being bullied going into a school which was uh, all Macedonians and I was the only Albanian, uh, whether being in the civil war, when the uh, war broke in former Yugoslavia and seeing some tremendous atrocities and being able to Pretty much, I did not know if I'm going to survive the, the next second, nonetheless, the next day. And then uh, growing up being uh, homeless as a teenager in, uh, in London, in a big city with no parents, I could not speak English. Now I teach many of my English clients how to write. That's the whole thing when it comes to really following this inner voice about uh, when you learn something and you master it, you know how to clearly explain it and teach it to others. And that for me is something that drives me to teach a billion people how to really live masterfully, how to grow businesses, how to become better leaders, how to become better teachers, better uh, academics, uh, better scientists, uh, better doctors, uh, better parents. So that really inspires me. And also I'm very lucky because now more and more Albanian people are, are coming forward to do this work, uh, which is very much holistic, integrated scientific, business engineering and spiritual altogether. Yeah, fortunately, we are becoming much more and more every day successful and we are just breaking all of those barriers and challenges that you just mentioned right now. But, uh, but something actually that just stuck on my mind now the way you was answering the question is that you, one day you was an immigrant. I think every Albanian somehow has been an immigrant somewhere. So what will you suggest that immigrants do to make their way to a virgin country? Well, there are many ways and there are many reasons why we end up migrants. You know, unfortunately, we don't have a, a, a country, and I'm talking about one country, that actually all Albanians want to live and want to really contribute and want to do things, and we have all the opportunities. We have a better lifestyle that the country we go to and better opportunities provides. Unfortunately, you know, we all come from uh, trauma. We come from 100 years of three world wars. And our parents are like that, and the country is like that. And therefore, the children who are growing up, naturally, they're seeking a better place. Naturally, parents want their children to be a better place. Now, depend on the reason for migration. For me, it was pretty much saving my life. And many Albanians did that to save their lives. But then also, we have an economic reason for uh, migrating. So anybody out there who's thinking to migrate, in today's world, you know, we have many different options. I would suggest to anybody, uh, that uh, sometimes the grass is not greener on the other side, meaning migration might not be the right solution for you. So I always say, you know, look at first, what is it that you can do in the environment which we live in, whether it's in Macedonia, whether it's in Kosovo, Albania, Montenegro, and other places in uh, Balkans where Albanians have uh, uh, lived. So if the last resort, you don't see any way out of that situation where you find yourself in, and you find that you want to actually go migrate, make sure you don't migrate with all of your problems. And make sure that you actually do a nice research. Make sure you learn about the culture. Make sure you learn about the language of the country you want to migrate. And make sure you know the skill that you can bring to this country and you can bring value to that country. And there is a, a official routes you can do that. And sometimes people chose, uh, choose the worst routes that can actually end lives. And we've seen so many people trying to come to Britain, for instance, where you know end up being dying crossing the channel from France uh, to England. Is it worth it? Is it worth your life uh, to be like that? Because, you know, migration in the majority of the Western world that majority of the Albanian people want to migrate to, uh, it's basically for economic reasons and bettering their lives. Now, you can start that by what I've shared, which is really understanding what is the value you bring into that country and then approach the right authorities or even companies to sponsor you for a visa. But what you may think that is the most the one factors that is causing emigration from our countries because we are both coming from the same origin we're both albanian we are seeing even today besides the war that's been happening in kosovo i mean the emigration it's it's kind of the same so we are still having um youth they wanted to go out of the kosovo out of albania out of macedonia as well so what do you think that actually it's making the youth to go away you mentioned it's about the economical side 
but is something else that you you think it's like making them to go out of this comfort zone and to leave the country and just as you say before to make sure that when you emigrate to emigrate with value with to emigrate to make update not to emigrate with the same mindset so what do you think it it's like the one of the best or not the best but one of the main factors that actually it's making the youth of Kosovo, the youth of, of the Albanian region where they are to emigrating uh from their roots frankly we're going to have about five years show every single day for me to go and tackle every aspect of our reality in those uh, countries coming from starting from uh, government and leadership, what's happening in the government and leadership, and what is that the kind of opportunities they're actually creating for the youth, and how they actually work on the marketing side of it, how do they work with ed uh, uh, um, educational institution, with businesses, with opportunities that basically youth people can be valued, they can feel there's a clear career progression, they can achieve their dreams. You know, there's small things happening for sure to help youth to actually start thinking differently about who they are what they want to do but unfortunately it's not enough done why because there's so much corruption that's happening everywhere in a, in, in the countries where albanians live whether it's macedonia whether it's albania whether it's kosovo and a lot of people once they come into politics into leadership positions they actually forget the reason why they're there and the reason why we all do what we do is to serve others in the most effective most efficient most amazing way so other people can benefit from your knowledge from your skills from your leadership and from everything that needs to change so there are so many aspects to the life that we have in those countries that needs to change and one of the key things is also like family conflicts a lot of people young people are avoiding and they want to run away from family conflicts why because albanians are stuck in in uh, in the uh, uh, i don't know 10th century not even 21st century you know they are stuck in their mindset they are stuck in their beliefs they are stuck in their values and majority of people especially family members they try to impose their values on you and unfortunately we are not something you can copy we are authentic individual beings with authentic desires with authentic values with authentic beliefs and authentic mission vision and purpose in life so you know i see so many young children being forced to get married and they don't want to get married or they get married and that also happened to me when you have those family backgrounds and pressures you make choices and decisions that later on you'll have to spend a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of frustration a lot of tears for you to clear up and a lot of people down there they are not truly empowered individuals and unfortunately not many people choosing education and choosing the roots for them to evolve as human beings for them to be able to transform their own lives they always expect somebody else to change their lives now if i expected for macedonia to sponsor my education i would have never been educated or been able to do what i do so i went out there worked every single job i had to do for me to create invest in my education change my life and overcome challenges personal challenges, family challenges, identity challenges, migration challenges, work challenges. So being able to not avoid the necessary things that we individual have to do in order to change our own lives. That's that's right. I think every one of us, um, every one of us, even beside the different ages, even beside the, the those of the elements that you mentioned, somehow we get, we get challenge on this side but i have another question regarding to this answer that you just provide right now for us we are seeing that today is most of the youth from different countries that are albanian as well they're going abroad to study but when they back in their country they are almost in the same place where they was so besides they're taking all of the knowledge around the world and they are studying abroad and they are not any more possibilities, let's say, because of the visa process and the passport they have from those countries. They always come back in the same country where they was, and they are still there is no opportunity for them. What is your message to all of those youth that actually probably they are seeing us right now and they are hearing somehow? Do you have any motivated message? Because I have a lot of friends who are come back from their studying abroad in Kosovo, in Albania, in Macedonia, and they are still like feeling demotivated because they are still not finding opportunity in the country, besides they are being filled with knowledge and experience. And even that was has been international experience as well. Right, I mean, I meet people around the world, Blerta, who you're describing right now, where people have tremendous academic uh, uh, background, but they don't have the wisdom required to turn that academic background into, I would say, uh, a service or a product that other people are willing to pay you 
Now, you know, we tend to impose ourselves on other people. Unfortunately, it's not the route to go. The route to go is about saying, okay, this is what I have learned. What is it that I can do with this knowledge? Because if knowledge sits inside of you and it's not continually uh, 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 upgraded, it becomes toxic. Now, life teaches us that, Lerta. If you take a, a water and you leave it somewhere in the garden and that water doesn't um, move, you can't drink it after a week. It becomes toxic for you. So knowledge is the same. Knowledge which is not uh, practiced and put into use, it becomes toxic. Therefore, it can turn against you. Now, a lot of people who uh, go like that abroad and come back with no opportunities, it's because they haven't really shown or really taught how to apply that knowledge in their reality. And this is where I think most academic institutions fail because they can teach you some things which is incredible, but they're not really going into the detail how whatever you're learning applies to you, to your life. This is where training, coaching, and mentoring comes into, uh, uh, into play. This is why globally, some of my clients actually employ me for their children to be able to do exactly that with their children. Because, you know, I, I've done talks in um, uh, uh, different universities, including the uh, Cranfield School of Management, where some of these people paying 60,000, 80,000 pounds a year to do an MBA. But then what is the application of that in their reality? And, you know, having worked with some of the uh, MBA students, PhD students and doctorate, I find really incredible how this wisdom sits in there, not being applied to wherever it is. So in our countries, one of the big uh, things that uh, country leaders can do, businesses can do, uh, like different outreach organizations can do, NGOs can do, uh, and every part in the system to really create a plan of what are all the problems in that country. You know, we are there to solve problems. No matter what your education background or experience uh, you have, you have the ability to solve specific problems. Now, when you have at a bigger level, country level, somebody who is actually uh, a great leader, they can actually engage in creating the, uh, the space for those people to come forward. But this does not work only top down. It also works uh, bottom up, which means what is it that you do that you can actually change and solve a problem. And uh, uh, the fortunate thing today is we have the internet. And with internet, you have ability to actually uh, monetize your wisdom anywhere around the world. So, and sometimes a lot of people from uh, our, uh, uh, places where we live, Macedonia, Kosovo, and uh, Albania, they try to charge for services, same as somebody, an expert in London. That does not work. You must really apply your charging or whatever you're doing according to your own economy and according to the value you bring to the client. Because if the client doesn't have a value from your knowledge, they're not going to pay you. Very, very um, great summarize on this, uh, on this question. And very motivated, especially, I mean, I couldn't agree more with all what you say. So um, thank you for your answer. Um, we mentioned before about our roots and um, regarding so for someone was kind of issue where what we are where we're we coming from and etc but what was actually one of your skills in finding the root cause of someone's issue no matter what they may be how, how for instance how do you integrate and holistics coaching in your methods and work and why do you methods transforming lives but when somebody starts work with me, it happens exactly what you can see in the world, just a bit of it. Uh, what we do is basically I help them. First of all, I fire them thousands of quality questions and to pretty much look at the noise in the brain and what's really happening in their reality. But uh, across all of my clients, no matter whether they seek uh, my help for their personal growth, well, whether it's for confidence, motivational speaking, whether it's building the business, creating products, innovation, uh, leadership, family issues, conflict, addictions, phobias, no matter what the human predicament of my client is, one of the things that is also common is they come to me with a preconceived idea of who they are and what the issue is. And this is one of the biggest blocks because basically this is just a symptom of something much deeper. So when I use my integrated work, it's for instance, when I've worked with married couples, um, I, I have to work first with one and the other, especially people who run a business together, and then being able to align their psychology in a way that comes into a common visions. So something, uh, issues that uh, for, uh, for people that come with preconceived ideas are always much deeper than what the person can see in themselves. And this is why 
we cannot be the best version of ourselves if we don't have an external expert and coaches and mentors who can pretty much be a mirror for us a clean mirror because you can have people who are a different level of expertise but that doesn't mean they will get you the results that you want and when i actually um uh, started this work because i worked 15 years as a corporate uh, a senior technologist and i uh, run billion pound almost seven billion pound technology transformation programs as part of my duties it was about developing people developing people coming from university and growing into their jobs into experiences but also setting their mindset uh, looking at their daily actions and also growing them into their jobs but managing the risks managing finances managing business and actually creating clear visions of what the technology can do for the businesses now throughout all that period i never stopped learning and most people finish university, finish a degree or start a job and that's it for them. Or you, you get married and that's it for you or whatever you might do. And they have this uh, a rigid mindset that basically refuses to grow to the next idea, to the next challenge, to the next things that you can do in your life. And uh, globally, when I see people not succeeding, it is because of this rigid mindset. So when I um finished uh in 2009 frankly after i was the last one to depart from a, a career that i loved because of the financial crisis uh, i got a huge government job that i had to do around transformation so i had to rapidly grow and learn new skills uh, get new qualifications in technology and stuff i had to be able to uh, deliver the most effective efficient way the program that i was bestowed upon to deliver now when i finished that i literally had to listen to this uh, calling that I had since I was a kid, which is about uh, impacting people's lives. And the corporate world for me gave me all of the skills that I needed. But there was this bigger voice inside of me that I wanted to integrate psychology, spirituality, um, uh, business, engineering, technology, leadership, because we are all of those things and we need all of those things. And therefore, I put all of my best knowledge uh, having learned cognitive behavior therapy, neurolinguistic, um, having learned neuroscience, uh, 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 psychological different methodologies, healing methodologies, I wanted to create a step-by-step -step principle that people can use. And one of the things that happens to every individual is that we're not listening to the alarm, our body, our mind, our heart, our soul, daily in every second gives us when we are not in alignment with our true authentic self. So that's what uh, the first book, A Path to Wisdom, became. Um, uh, I pretty much laid down a framework of my business that now has become global. And the foundation of the work I do, I use those 25 principles, but then didn't stop in there. You know, and my engineering mind and uh, science-driven, problem-driven and solution-driven mind wanted to create even bigger things for for the bigger challenges my clients were having. So therefore I created uh, other methodologies, including the unfakeable code. And one of the key things that stop people from actually really succeeding is their daily behaviors. So therefore I created uh, also a method about behavioral change principles that I use consistently to take people from an existing situation to a desired outcome. Those are very transforming lives for all of the, all of the points that you mentioned. And uh, of course, you mentioned as well the methods that you work. But what are your methods to carry on when you doubt your capabilities? Well, doubt, fear, insecurities, anxiety, all of this comes to you back whenever you have a bigger challenge. Now, once you overcome a challenge, uh, you know, we feel at the top of the world. But reality, life will always present us with bigger challenges. And when you learn those, and because I've devised my own methodologies, which pretty much uh, can re-engineer your mind, I use the principles that I actually teach my clients in myself to literally overcome any doubts or fears and clarify exactly the next step. Because when the mind is clear, um, uh, your actions are clear. And so when you have a mind clear and an action clear, it's mean that we are ready to push our goals and to make our success. Yes, I mean, it's basically, it's not just having the mind clear. When you have the mind clear, you also have to have a clear plan for your goals. Because most people can write goals, and most people write goals which are uh, not even smart goals. You know, uh, there's no point you writing about something. Let's say you want to be a multimillionaire. And most people say, oh, yes, I want this dream. But then if I look at their daily seconds, daily uh, hour, daily uh, weekly uh, stuff, 
their actions, their behaviors, and what is it they do to get there are nowhere near aligned. They have millions of distractions. So, you know, there's many aspects to your daily life and your psychology that needs to be in alignment, what inside you feel and what is on the outside that it's happening and it's creating. And most people don't know how to realign those two worlds. So they can use them as a mirror. This is why many of my clients from around the world uh, seek out my expertise to help them first and foremost to transform the inner world in alignment with the results they want to see in the outer uh, experience of life. But in those timelines that you just mentioned, I think you're currently teaching your five day virtual planning business life and wealth mastery program in Cancun. Can you tell us a little bit more about the life changing program that you have been teaching globally since 2008? Yes, I mean, when I basically working as an engineer and was working as a technologist, one of the key things uh, in part of my duties was consistently making sure that clear plans that other people can follow. It's, you know, we are so used to nowadays using GPRS to get from point A to point B, but many people don't have the GPRS for their mind. And, you know, uh, what GPRS does is collects all the data from a satellite data, puts it together, and your device can connect with satellite at any point in time. It can tell you exactly where you are. And then when you put a destination to get there, the, uh, everything happens in the technology for you to be able to follow uh, step by step how to get there. So this inspired me back in 2008, inspired me to put a program together, how people can actually organize their mind, because most people have chaos in their mind. And, you know, most people don't even sleep well. Most people are stressed. Most people have anxiety, depression. Uh, they have fears, they have doubts. Uh, you know, they have family problems. They have stress. They don't know exactly what they can do with their lives. And when you don't know what to do with their life, you don't have a plan. So therefore, if you think like the greatest things around the world, including, for instance, this amazing five-star hotel where I'm in here, it wasn't built without a clear plan, without an architect. So, you know, this desire to be an architect for uh, people's minds, was for me since I was a kid. Now, you know, Vital Planning was created exactly that, to extract everything out of people's mind and reorganize their mind and do it over and over so they can get, they can have a clear financial plan, clear mind empowerment plan, clear emotional empowerment plan, clear uh, relationship plan, clear speaking plan, because some, uh, uh, some of my clients depend on their speaking, whether it's on TV, on radio, on big stages, uh, with their company, with their teams, to be able to actually deliver what they need to deliver. So this is pretty much a life optimizing and mind organizing experience. So on this maximizing experience that you had and teaching globally, I'm sure and has been based all of those that you teach are based on your experience that you just mentioned right now. And you have been writing many books and you are the case subject that you treat in your books. What are the purpose of your books that you have been writing? Uh, basically, it's when I left the corporate world, I understood uh, uh, how every chaos that presents to us in our personal life, but also in the social life, is an opportunity to create an order. Because if you study life sciences like I do, cosmology, science, uh, uh, religion, biology, technology, uh, leadership, wealth building, there's a hidden order in all of that that most people don't spend the time to be able to create it. So I spend that time for my clients, they can actually shortcut 30 years of study and learning to be able to create effective results. So when I left the corporate world in 2008, 2009, what was consistently happening globally, a lot of people committed suicide as a result of the financial crash, because those people had a lot of uh, um, obligations behind that. And if you ask any human being, the reason, every question you ask me in this interview, Deep down, people want to be worthy, want to have money for the things they want to create in their lives, whether it's for their children, for their education, for the business, for the house, for the car, for the makeup, for the beautiful hair you have, uh, uh, whatever it may be, you want to have wealth. And if you're not financially empowered, somebody else will overpower you and you build totally out of balance. So majority of people become ill because of the different stresses. Majority of people don't have that uh, life and work balance or life and work integration, I call it more, because that's what we have become now since COVID started. But uh, when I actually came out, I did a little MBA course and I wanted to really put all of those ideas, all of those learning, the different strategies. As an engineer, I want to re-engineer people's mind so can really create most beautiful structures in their head, which then applies into utter reality. So the first book, A Path to Wisdom, was born. 
Now, as I started traveling and coaching clients around the world, and both privately in corporation and organizations, I realized that it was this, um, as the technology was evolving, as new apps are coming up, I realized how people became even more lonely. But what people don't understand is the states of loneliness can actually lead to depression, anxiety, and suicide. But also it can affect your physiology, it can affect your ability to think, speak, your ability to connect with people, your relationships, in the way you actually um, uh, integrate yourself with a wider aspect of life. But worst part is actually loneliness is as, as dangerous as smoking, uh, almost like smoking in 16 to a packet of cigarettes a day. And uh, there are so many people around the world. I was traveling, I was seeing lonely. I would go to restaurants, their children would not communicate anymore. They go on their iPads to sh shut their children. In corporations, you know, teams and leaders wouldn't communicate with each other. They didn't even know their names. You know, family, friends, they stopped communicating. And this uh, loneliness became like a loneliness pan pandemic. And therefore I started looking into the research, another big global problem. And uh, I wrote hashtag loneliness. And the reason I put hashtag, it was to really reach out to all this new generation, Z generation, Y generation, X generations, that basically um, never knew a world without technology. To be able to help them to, instead of uh, using technology to, in a sense, damage their own life, being able to use technology in effective ways so you can actually integrate, communicate, and connect with yourself better and learn many new skills. Now, yeah, I call it the virus of modern age because, for instance, somebody, let's say in one of the social medias, let's say Facebook, somewhere else, does a very nasty comment about somebody else. If you're not uh, stable in your own psychology, one single comment can spoil your entire day, week or months or years and can affect you emotionally, mentally, financially in every single way. So Hashtag Loneliness was born as the first book in the world with the word hashtag. And many people, thousands of people have sent me personal letters to say that I actually wrote their, uh, their life story. So my life story became their life story who they went through and they felt inspired and they started saying, uh, sharing the book with their families, with their children, in education, in every different place. Now, being an engineer, always solving bigger problems, um, I was approached to write another book called Fit for Purpose Leadership, specifically on leadership. And uh, my focus in that book was about burnout and stress. And this is uh, another pandemic that happens at the leadership level because it's not easy to be a great leader. And especially if you have been put in a leadership position just because of a privilege or just because you happen to be there or you have the money or you have the connections. True leaders have to go through a lot of pain or a lot of challenges to shape themselves and continuous learning and commitment. And uh, after that, it's sort of uh, having done more work with leaders, corporations uh, to help them. I actually, uh, when COVID started, I pretty much was shocked at what was happening in front of our eyes and pretty much predicted that the COVID will last at least three years before it, uh, we start to come to some form of new normal. So my first interview back in um, uh, 2020, uh, um, I actually shared both on uh, uh, global media and also in the Albanian media that my prediction is the pandemic will last three years. This year is the third year. So last year, uh, pretty much when I looked at everything, the aftermath of COVID at the first lockdown, I knew we're going to have aftermath of mental health issues, leadership issues, business issues, financial issues, family issues, divorce issues, abuse issues. And I wanted to create another book to help people tackle all of those issues. And one of the ways to tackle that by bringing and empowering people to be their true authentic self and actually bringing that authentic self into the world and then using that as a way for you to overcome every single challenge that COVID presented to us. So that's how the Unfakeable Code was born. And uh, it's only been a few months, but it won many awards already. And uh, it was bestseller in five categories in business and leadership, self-help uh, books on Amazon. And it keeps growing and has a chance now to become the first Albanian on New York Times bestseller list. And for me, things like that really inspires me. Why? Because uh, when you see somebody using your work and your teachings to transform and change their lives, it's the most joyous experience you can have. Absolutely. And I'm sure that you're thrilled about that and you're super happy because the way that you're answering the question, it's full of enthusiasm and full of the happiness. Yes. So 
I think that on this interview, we grabbed too many messages from your side, but what are the three K messages which you would like to share with the youth watching our show who often struggle to decide what to do and how to find their way or what kind of career path is fit for them? So it will be great if you just can motivate for all of the youth that we have as an audience on this show with your powerful three K messages. So message number one is uh, to listen to your inner being, uh, what is truly telling you. And at the same time, to listen to the outer reality, what is truly telling you. And then understand the gap between what you want inside and what the life shows you back at you. And then take every single action you need to take in order to match those two realities. And uh, um, uh, lesson number two uh, for people, for the youth out there who want to do is to learn not to avoid challenges and pains and things that you perceive to be impossible, but instead to uh, use whatever that is telling you, whatever the challenge may be, and create stepping stones for the next level you want to see yourself at. And the third one, which I cannot stress enough, it's uh, sit down and create a plan for your life because most people think to me and tell me they have a plan in their head whether it's an organization or business or individual or family member or child it does not matter but the reality majority of them they don't have a plan for what you want and if you don't have a detailed plan what you want the life or other people will tell you what you want so the quickest way to empower yourself is to truly create a, a detailed plan and follow up with an inspired action every single day until you start seeing results in your outer reality. That's very motivated. I think then it will be very, um, it will take them for sure because even me, I was taking a couple of notes here and doing the interview with you. It's very uh, great to have such a powerful messages, especially for such a great, successful human being as you are and putting very sunshine in our life and making us real realize with ourselves that actually what we have to do, where we are going. And of course, to sit down and to write another plan for our life, because sometimes even that plan doesn't work. We have to jump to another plan or maybe we can update that plan that we had before. So is there a core belief, value and philosophy that you are most enthusiastic about it? So maybe probably it will be for your side. If it is, can you just share with us what actually it is the core of belief and value that um, it is on your side? My core belief is that we are divine in our nature. And uh, no matter what background you come from, whatever, no matter what creed, color, sexuality, uh, no matter what family background, wealth, uh, country, uh, no matter who you are, uh, you are divine in your nature. And when you take that core belief as your uh, uh, product of that divine nature, whether it's God or stuff, uh, something like that, anything else that's going on in your mind can be pretty much uh, illuminated by that core belief and therefore uh, push you to go forward, to take every action, to do every job, to create the finances you need to be able to transform your life. That's very impressive. But when it comes to to um, to those that all of you share with us, like the belief and the philosophy, the kind messages, what actually is the next big goal for your project? Like, what is the next biggest, let's say, step for Tony J. Salimi? Well, I never stop. And those who know me and those who follow me on social media, they will see me around the world doing some incredible things with my clients. And for me, the next step is pretty much to innovate and create new products and services for my clients to go to the next level because every year brings new challenges for my clients, for the businesses, for themselves, for their families, their children. And uh, so I'm in the process of writing another book and it started in uh, this beautiful, actually it started in US. I was in US prior to coming here and it's called A Path to Excellence. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring into that, another methodology and, uh, uh, you know, it's, I'm not going to describe much in, in this interview, but pretty much uh, we are destined for excellence. So going back to my core belief that I shared earlier on about our divinity of our nature, if we actually listen to that 
we, no matter what you want to become, uh, whether you want to be a doctor, whether you want to be a scientist, whether you want to be a mother, you know, no matter what it is, there is a uh, part of ourselves that makes you uh, uh, create this vision of excellence for you. You can be the best athlete, you can be the best musician, you can be whatever you want to be. But if you're going to decide to be that thing, make sure you consistently follow those actions, those challenges. And the other book is about, you know, so many people out there, uh, uh, like the uh, people you mentioned to me about having this education, but they don't know what to do with it. I'm actually writing another book called The Unfakeable Genius, and how pretty much you can turn all of those wonderful uh, skills that you built over a lifetime into a purposeful mission and pretty much become a genius that you admire. For instance, uh, you know, we admire many geniuses like Nikola Tesla, when, like uh, Henry Ford, like, you know, let's say today's geniuses, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and uh, Bill Gates or Oprah or people we get inspired by. So the unfakeable uh, genius and a path to excellence uh, uh, with the rest of my books are pretty much uh, creating a life plan for you. Uh, so you don't have to do those 30 years. So people can actually go grab every book do the exercises in there, start planning and start growing and start doing all those wonderful things. And also, uh, one of the key services that I uh, pretty much started last year, uh, the Into Your Divinity documentary series is about all of my, uh, some of my private clients who want to use this work of their own transformation for their, growing their businesses, their ideas, their communities, whatever they want to do. So I take clients through this experience, Vital Planning, for uh, one year, two year, or three year, and I film their journey and I, and I create a, a unique episode for them that on, not only can use to build their credibility, uh, bring visibility, impact, but also to transparently be vulnerable with the very same community they're trying to inspire. Because if you cannot be vulnerable, you cannot be authentic yourself, you cannot share your transformation, your journey, this very little likelihood those people will trust you. And if you're not being trusted as a business owner, and if you're not being transparent and authentic as a leader, uh, you're not gonna get what you want. And therefore, you know, it, it, I wanted to create a, a, a new model of service where uh, your transformation can be an inspiration for millions, if not billions of people. I think you're going to have a lot of work for us. And I'm sure that a lot of the audience are very thrilled to reading your books. I am among of them for sure, as because I'm very motivated from your interview that I have with you. And it's very honor for me to be honest with you. So, but all the things that you mentioned right now, I'm sure that it's, we miss another answer from your side. Where can our viewers learn more about you or uh, what you can do for them? And what is the process to start working with you? So one of the best way to actually really learn about me, it's go to my website, tonyselimi.com and also TonyJSalimi.com because I set up both websites because people would either call me Tony Salimi or Tony J. Salimi. And they, they have all the links in there for them to connect on social media and follow my work and the inspiration. I create daily quotes for people to simply think about it because majority of the quotes are there. They're pretty much polarized quotes and they're biased quotes, which does not do you any good. So I want you to really be a thought leader and create quotes which balances the perceptions and the mind so people can have a different awareness. And uh, the other part is, uh, uh, I always believe leaders are readers. So if you want to activate leadership in your own life, by all means start reading all of the books that I have in there. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned in our interview was the fact that uh, because I wanted to also bring this spirituality that I've been infused since I was a kid, I started writing spiritual poems. And those are, will be public, publishing 12 different spiritual books, uh, poems for people to use poems as a way to educate themselves. And uh, I, I recently published uh, a selection of 12 poems in a book called Novum 10 by an Austrian publisher with, a, uh, with some amazing other authors from entire Europe. So it's called Novum 10. People can go into the Novum Publishing and find that and read my first poem that I uh, put in there. But each line, each poem in that book, if people do that daily, I guarantee them a full transformation. So uh, pretty much there's a great way for you to learn about what I do by reading those books and doing the exercises. But also for people who are ready straight away, 
uh, to go in there. The first step is pretty much to get in touch with my PA info at tonyselimi.com and book an initial consultation. Now, you can book consultation for yourself or whatever issue, or you can book for your business, for your team, uh, for your family, it does not matter. And for those who are ready to invest that higher amount of time, energy, as well as resources and money, and they want to accelerate, they are ready to bring their business if they start to a whole new level, I invite them to book one of those five or 10 days programs when this work is unique, it's one-to-one -one with you. I use 30 years of my experience and learning to truly transform your life. So I think our viewers will have um, a guide where to find you and all, if they're interested for your courses, to find results as well, or to contact you directly. Why not? They just can express it so that they have an interest to start working with you. As we're coming across to the end of our interview, do you have anything else that would like to share with our viewers? Well, I mean, one of the things I would share with all the viewers, so I want you to remember uh, that divinity inside of you. And every time you have a challenge, every time you have a problem, those are perfect signals that you are not living your true divinity, your true power, your true purpose. And therefore, step back, uh, observe, and replan your next moves, your next actions, and invest in the greatest asset, which is you. Thank you so much for such a kind and a great word at the end of uh, our interview. And uh, thank you so much as well for being with us in our TV show, Leadership and Innovation. We sincerely appreciate your time for being with us and sharing your struggles success stories and new wisdom with our viewers. So I think this is very, very great from your side and it's very motivated. And I'm sure that our viewers, the audience that has been following this show, I think they're full inspiring from your success story, from all of your challenges that you have in life and has been an honor for us to have you. So dear Tony, thank you so much one more time for being guest speaker on our show. It has been a pleasure and my honor to be on your show and big thank you to you, to Fadil, the team behind Alpha C TV uh, and everybody that is involved in order to spread and disseminate knowledge of the diaspora and the expertise we all have for the betterment of humanity, but also our nation. Thank you so much. I'm sure that we're going to meet with each other in another interview when you're going to have your book finish it. And of course, we're going to be delighted to have you as well as a, as a guest as well to speak more about your future books. Thank you so much. So dear viewers, we have come to the end of this show. And our show, Leadership and Innovation, has an educational, motivating, and innovative character. Please get in touch with us if you want to invest or to advertise your services on RTV Alpse. Together, we can serve the world better. And thank you so much for watching, and all the best.